this system and this scheme is just policy. Um, it's just being rolled out with absolutely no regard for the law, legislation, and it's just simply a cash grab on motorists. Hello, and welcome back to Crime Suspect. Each week, we unravel some of the UK's most prolific crimes, as well as providing in-depth analysis on the criminality that plagues our nation. On the show today, bringing the ULEZ scheme to its knees. With hundreds of attacks on ULEZ cameras and calls by senior Tories to slash the scheme in favour of hard-pressed motorists, could there be an end to London's ULEZ zone? Next, is it safe in your neighbourhood? I'll be taking you, virtually, to my manor, Bexley, for this week's Postcode Watch. And finally, it's your chance to book a crook as we show you this week's Wanted Criminals. Joining me for all of this today is scaffolding business owner, but otherwise known as Mr Ulez, Noel Wilcox. Former Met Police Superintendent Shabnam Chowdhury and Paul the Orange Dinosaur, a ULES campaigner who proves today, for one week only, I'm not the only dinosaur in the studio. Now, you have the right to remain watching. This is Crime Suspect. All right, since the ULEZ scheme was expanded in August this year, five million more Londoners are facing daily charges of £12.50 if their vehicles do not comply. And when they fail to cough up the cash, they're being slapped with fines of up to £180. A fierce backlash from motorists saw many cameras being stolen and damaged by groups of anti ULEZ vigilantes who've taken it upon themselves to smash, spray paint and cut wires on cameras at various sites across London. They say they want to bring the expanded ULEZ scheme to its knees and have a series of exciting plans in place. So, Shabnam, tell me about the scale of this criminality, the amount of damage and the such like. Well, Peter, across London, there's something like 2,800 ULES cameras, and I think a significant number of those are within the inner London boroughs. But what the Metro Police have had reported to them are something like 795 cameras that have been damaged or stolen. 200 of those were damaged and 595 of those were stolen. So, significant no amount of cameras. That's a huge amount of crimes. And what are the Met Police doing about it? Well, the Met in May of this year, they launched an operation to target those offenders that are either damaging or stealing those cameras. Operation Eremon, I think. That's the one, exactly, Peter. And what they've done is they've not got dedicated teams, but every borough will have officers uh, across that borough that will investigate those types of crimes. So they will look at witness evidence, they'll look at CCTV footage, they'll look at any opportunities for forensics to maximise their opportunities to arrest those offenders. And I think there's only been a tiny number of arrests, hasn't there? Well, there's been two arrests. Uh, one has been discontinued. One will go to trial in uh, June of next year. And I think there was a recent one uh, in the last couple of months who has been bowed to return to uh, the station in uh, December of this year. So the bottom line is the Metropolitan Police are about as likely to solve these crimes as they are to solve the crimes of a phone theft, a bicycle theft, a domestic burglary, a car being stolen and much more. Well, criminal damage isn't actually a priority crime. And then when they, um, you know, the theft or the cameras, depending on the price of the damage, the lower the damage, the less chance there is of police actually investigating it in any case. Paul the Dinosaur. Now, I'm not going to suggest for a moment that you've been involving yourself in crime, although obstructing the highway might be an offence in certain circumstances. Um, what have you been doing to try and combat the rollout of this ULES? Um, well, like myself and other protesters, obviously, we, uh, you know, will block 
the camera with a with a sign, with a dinosaur outfit, or um, or even in some instances other vehicles, personal vehicles. Is ULES ever going to be scrapped? It can and it will. Um, we've got two um, candidates. Um, we've got Susan Hall and Howard Cox, both running for election to Just replace... Just interrupting the... you there. So, Susan Hall is the Conservative candidate for the London mayoral election. That's correct. And Howard Cox represents the Reform UK party. That's correct. And both have vowed to uh, scrap the ULES expansion. So, wouldn't your time be better spent leafleting, campaigning and helping either one or both of those mayoral candidates? My time, I feel, is best spent saving hard-working people £12.50 a day. Noel, you've had a very interesting relationship with Transport for London, TfL, and you, Les. Tell me about that, please. Well, I committed a crime and I went to work. That's the crime that I committed. So, yeah, my company was hit with £11,500 worth of fines back in July... 2021. Is this your fleet of vehicles? Yes, yes it was. So we were operating out of our base, which is in Harefield, and um, little did I know at the time, because we, um, we just moved yards, um, little did we know at the time that there was this low emission zone scheme in place. N no idea what that was. Right. But then, of course, the onus would be on you to be aware of any rules and regulations that might apply. So surely you read the signs, didn't you? Well, it's, it's quite interesting that you say that because, yeah, I mean, the onus is on the driver to make sure that you're compliant with the law. So surely a scheme is not the law. OK. So that was, that was the kind of confusing part, you know, for me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we saw these signs that just said L-E-Z. Yeah. And that was it. There was right. no information that was on those signs at all. What grounds did you challenge these fines on then? Right, so when, when, we, received, when we received the fines that had come through, if, if I could just clarify, it's, it's a thousand pounds if you don't pay the hundred pound auto pay system. Yeah. But there's no signs telling you that there is a charge. So that immediately aroused my suspicions as to exactly what this was. So I challenged it to TFL when I said, look, you know, we've not received any post. Is there any chance that we can review this? And they were absolutely not interested at all. I, I armed myself with the knowledge. I read up on the Road Traffic Regulations Act um, and I quickly established that the signs were not, law, were not lawful, in my opinion, at that stage. Is your case now, your opinion, that the signs are still unlawful? One, 100%. The symbol that we all recognise is the red background with the white C, yep. yeah, which would indicate that there's a charge. Yeah? Um, yeah, that's what the law states and that's what we, we're all led to believe. The tribunal, I understand, ruled in your favour and set the fines and the charges aside, didn't they? In my court order that I had, it said that all of the penalty charge notices and all of my fees are to be refunded to me. By so, TfL? By Transport for London, without delay. And that was the ruling from the court. But they've not abided by that. And how long ago was that ruling made? So that ruling was in October 2021, but after that court order was um, implemented by the court, Transport for London then deployed their bailiffs to come after me and pursued me for a good year after that court order. So they'd had the court order, they knew what the findings were of the court, but because it was such a substantial amount of money, 11,500 pounds, you know, they deployed their bailiffs to still pursue us for those debts. Shab, now, we're talking about big numbers here. If we're talking about the 11,000 or so with Noel, if we multiply that over millions of journeys, this scheme is going to raise an enormous amount of money, isn't it? Well, I think they're looking at something like 174 million a year that will generate revenue um, for Transport for London. Um, and they talk about what they're going to do with it, which is they're going to use it for better transport systems. Um, so for uh, the public, that will be far better for them. But I'm a, um, and they'll also use the money from the enforcement as well. So yeah, there will be. It's a big, big money making business. But it's all about health. The mayor for London says, if they're raising money, surely that would be ploughed back into health facilities. 
Well, it's not just about the health. The, the, the health aspect is about reducing the pollution levels. And um, uh, as I understand it, by October 2022, uh, NO2 levels had been reduced by around uh, 46%. Is in that nitrous London. oxide or something? That's it, right. yep. And also uh, by 21% in the inner London boroughs. So there has been significant impact on it. That's a huge amount of money to use for the transport for London systems. And I think actually that's not a bad idea. They're talking about reducing pollution levels and making air cleaner and greener and so on. Then there are lots of other things that they could use that money for. Could pay for a lot of police officers who could investigate a lot more crime, couldn't it? Well, particularly the ULES ones, yeah. really. Noel, hmm. what's your end game with regards to all of this? Not only your fines, but now you carry the name Mr ULES. You're, you can't be detached from the whole ULES ongoing arguments and, and campaigns. So what is your end goal? Um, I, I, I don't really have as such an end goal, but, you know, in my mind, I'm absolutely adamant, in my opinion, that the signage is, is not lawful and it does not give the motorists the correct information. And it is just a cash grab on motorists. You know, if you don't know about a charge, then in my opinion, that charge doesn't exist. The Transport for London issues that Noel talks about, I, I agree with him in that respect, that needs to be um, tightened up if they're going to keep the ULS cameras. But in essence, the bottom line is this, the police don't want to increase their crime levels because of criminal damage, thefts and so on. And their workload, they don't want to increase their workload. Well, they don't want to increase their workload, so there's got to be better ways to protect those cameras, but that's not the job of the police, that's the job of Transport for London, but their job is to investigate it. And I think, despite the fact that we have these cameras, it, it is what it is in terms of police uh, investigating crime. If the responsibility for protecting those cameras falls upon TfL, does the responsibility for protecting our homes, our cars, our families, our loved ones, does that fall upon us as individuals as well? No, I hear what you're saying, Peter, but that could be with anything. When you look at anything that is owned by the local authority or by council, there's certain types of trees and so on. If those um, items or, you know, bits and pieces are, are damaged, then the responsibility falls on the police to, to investigate. They are there to protect, to serve, to investigate and to bring offenders to justice. And they have the skills and the experience to do that job. That doesn't fall on anybody else to do. I just think that... Um, you know, if you're going to roll something out like this and you're not going to listen to the people, you know, the people will take matters into their own hands. And I do understand from the police's perspective that they're kind of ca caught between a rock and a hard place. I know the law is the law and what's written in black and white, but, you know, everybody can see the, the, the pressure that this is putting on everybody. You know, it's tough out there. Life is tough. You know, every day, you know, when you're battling to get to school, you're battling traffic, roadworks, this, you know, there's so many different things you know, on, on, a, on, a, on a daily basis that you're going to endure the stresses of life in general. Um, and then when you're getting hit with horrendous fines, I mean, this ULES is £180 fine. You know, who is making up these figures? Will you bring this scheme down? <laughs> Will I bring this scheme down? Um, look, I, from my perspective, what I fight for is justice. The same as you and the same as you, yeah? I fight for justice, and what I think is, is that this system and this scheme is just policy. Um, it's just being rolled out with absolutely no regard for the law, legislation, and it's just simply a cash grab on motorists. Paul, who's going to win this battle? Will you, Les, remain forever and a day, or will the dinosaurs, the Blade Runners and the other campaigners see an end to this scheme? I'd like to think the latter, uh, and I hope that... That is the case. And while I work, I work nights normally, I'm a civil engineer, so daytime I can get out and protest in a dinosaur outfit um, with other dinosaurs. Daily, we're growing in numbers. People have had enough. The dinosaur has inspired people that they've taken notice. It's bringing their attention to this issue. Well, I'd add to that as well. I, what I would say is that um, I don't think this is going away anytime soon. At the moment... What, the scheme or the campaigning? The, well, the campaigning, I should think, will continue, but I think the scheme won't go away. Um, nine out of ten cars are already ULES compliant, and I think that's a huge, significant number. And I think once um, there's a potential to roll out across nationally, I think they'll take that opportunity for the revenue, 
for the fact that it makes um, uh, you know the air cleaner and greener, but also for the fact that there's such a small number now that they need to cross over to the other side. Well, thank you all very much for a very enlightening discussion today. Thank you. Right, moving on to this week's postcode watch, and we're in my manor, Bexley, the third safest borough in London, which is nothing to do with me. The annual crime rate here was 64 crimes per 1,000 people per year as of 2022. The most common crimes in Bexley are violence and sexual offences with 6,032 offences during 2022, which is 6% higher than 2021's figure of 5,677. Bexley's least common crime is bicycle theft with only 93 offences, a decrease of 34% from 2021's figure of 140 crimes. Now, if you happen to live in Bexley's Broadway, which is where I go shopping, but not socialising, then I hope you're keeping your doors locked because it's the most dangerous neighbourhood in Bexley, followed by Erith East in second place and Crayford as the third most dangerous area. Bexley's safest neighbourhood is Bostel, followed by Bursty Wood in second and Longlands and Halfway in third. I don't live in any of those. All right, it's time for the part of the show where we bring you mugs of thugs who are terrorising our streets. Have you seen these criminals? First up is this suspect. He's wanted in connection with more than 10 sexual assaults that took place on London's buses. He usually boards the bus in Westfield, Shepherd's Bush, Ealing Broadway or Acton High Street and is known to keep his face covered. Next, we have Stephen Drinkwater. This 42-year-old from Wolverhampton is wanted for a number of serious fraud offences. And lastly, have you seen this man? Police are on the lookout for a man they think is connected to an assault at the AO Arena in Manchester back in early September of this year. If you think you know or have seen any of these crooks, please get in touch anonymously with Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. Right, that's all we've got time for this week. Many thanks to Noel, Shabnam and to Paul, the orange Bexley dinosaur. Be sure to leave us a comment, like and subscribe and we'll be back next week for more Crime Suspects.